Now, this is an incandescent light. The one you just saw fall. Yes, that is the same thing as this. Let's try turning it on with no filtering. See, the reason I said no filtering is because most or all of these incandescent lights have a filtering glass against UV light. So basically, it is smooth, but there's no UV light or minimal UV light for safety and for bacterial reasons. So let's turn this on with no protection. See, the thing is, the light is right over here. So the only thing we need to do is just plug this in and we're gonna be good. I don't have any glasses, so I'm just gonna turn it on and see what happens. Ah, yes, see, well, you have a lot of heat that is radiating from this light. If you didn't, something would be wrong. But we can figure out how much radiation we can make. So well, all we need is very cold surface and some steam. That's it. That's gonna be later. So right now, let's turn this on. As you can see, it's pretty bright. It's actually brighter than usual because, you know, safety standards. But inside of there is tungsten. Tungsten, world's most highest melting point ma uh, material or metal. So in this case, we can take this light and theoretically make it into a, well, it actually is technically already a ray tube. If we put a magnet right here strong enough, oh, it's pretty hot. If we put a magnet right here strong enough, we could create a very small amount of x-rays. We could put a magnet here. We don't really need the whole coil, but it's gonna heat it up. It's gonna work like a microwave. That's how a magnetron works from a microwave. You have a coil right here and you have three parts. So first things first, you need to heat up the coil in front. Then after that, you need to put a high voltage, high enough voltage, so it shoots out and not get stuck in between here. That's why there's two big magnets. So it's stuck inside, when it doesn't do anything. But when you have high enough voltage plus heat right here, it just pushes it out. So that's basically what we're trying to do, except with one thing. So can't really do it, but it's gonna create very, very little amount of, well, anything. So, except light. We have two magnets pushing each other, meaning that it's gonna come out of this side. So if we actually turn this on right now, well, nothing's really gonna happen. So what is the main principle? The main principle is heating this up. Then we need to put a high enough voltage. So all we need to do is put a very small little needle, not inside, just enough so it can penetrate through and get the glass. See, glass voltage breakdown has from about 2000 volts to about 3000 volts per inch, which I don't know why it's specified, but you know, we can actually use that because this sparker right here can do about that, can spark around this much, which is a little bit more than an inch. Let's try it out. Let's see how much this can spark. So this, this is the anode, this is the cathode. The anode is stationary, but the cathode can actually move around. So if we just put this on top of here, move this close, and then you guys will, see that so me being me of course I can put this on here and then just put it like this that's the let's say the most jankiest way I could do it but of course we have things called alligator clips which are gonna help us quite a bit but see the thing is this is manual work we don't want manual work we just want taser circuit speak we have quite a few so basically, we have this one, which is actually a little bit better because this can also spark, but you know, it's a little bit further away. Oh, it's shorted. So it's also uh, quicker. Then we have, of course, the traditional taser circuits, which can be used. And then, well, that's basically all, basically. I could make my own, but that's just gonna be a lot of work. So. Let's get a lithium ion battery. Let's measure the voltage and then let's try using the taser circuit. So it'll be still pretty interesting. Okay, 4.16 volts, fully charged. 
Uh, now the taser part is right here. It's gonna be the not colored wires. These are the two separate col uh, colored wires. So the red one is positive, the green one is negative. So, we get, we get, we get a good plasma. But we don't really need that. We just need to have a breakdown voltage. So right now we're gonna put the bigger one, which in this case is this, we're gonna put this one in front and the smaller one. Actually, we might put the pointier one in front so it actually can shoot this way. Yeah, all right, so after uh, quite, a, quite a while, um, we've broken the light, we've tested the light. So I'm just gonna turn it on and see what happens. Light, we've tested the taser. And now we have this. So basically, the main function is you turn this on, then you turn on the taser. That is basically it. It's like two circuits. This is one, this is two. But this is gonna have a switch. Basically, we're gonna have this like that. I haven't tested it though, so this might be this will be interesting. Now, now we're done wiring. Look at this. So basically, we have everything connected up. We have this connected to this. It's basically like a series circuit. Everything is connected up and just the battery is connected to this to switch and this is connected to the taser circuit. Saved it. Uh, yeah, now we just put in the battery and it should, I hope it's the right one. It is not the right one. So as soon as I put in the battery, it's gonna work, which is not exactly what I wanted. I have to replace the switch. All right, I'm gonna bring up the brightness. So you guys will see the, the spark, the individual spark of the taser. There we go. That's inside of there. That's basically the coil is shaking because it needs to, or else it's not gonna reach, the, or else not, the charge is not gonna reach the coil. This is dark. So, avert your eyes for now, I guess. I don't know if this is gonna really affect if you guys are watching on a TV, then yes. So all right, three, two, one. Okay, we can't, we can't do this for a long time. I'm gonna bring down the brightness. There we go. So now you guys will see the coil is hot. Then, as you guys, yep. Looking back at the footage, I realized there were some lines. Those lines are actually represented by x-ray, so it's interference caused by it. When you have interference, that is good and bad. Good because it actually causes, you know, some not really damage, it just causes, you know, it's like allergies. When you have allergies, you know, oh yeah, it's that season. It's the same thing with interference. It's like, oh yeah, that's what's happening. But in this case, we actually know what's happening. The thing is, there's no magnets. So the x-rays are just dispersing everywhere. If we had magnets to focus, then that would be a lot more powerful because it's like a laser beam. It's like a laser versus a flashlight. A flashlight just disperses the light everywhere but a laser focuses the light all into one beam while well not really one beam you can still see the light because it still disperses but it's all focused into one contained dot so uh next video yeah next video i will try to make a very crude geiger counter so yeah guys have a good day thank you for watching peace